Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and breaking news, of course, coming out of Ukraine. And I want to thank our good friend Lorenzo on Already Happened on his Twitter page as well as his website. Uh, you can see it right here. These are T-64 tanks. These are the uh, an earlier generation of Russian tanks that are in Maripol, Ukraine. Uh, they have been shipped there by rail car via the Ukrainian government, totally unmarked. And of course, it has been uh, unidentifiable uh, Ukrainian forces that have actually brought these tanks to this area. There were seven tanks in all from what's being reported that were brought to this region. I'm gonna share with you uh, Lorenzo's uh, report here about these. Ukrainian T-64 tanks moved towards Maripol. That's on already-happen.com on his website there. And he has been asked already by multiple people to please remove these from the internet. Uh, the other day he had, his, uh, he had his website blocked as well. Uh, but you can see here on the site there the tanks moving not that great of a video footage there But you can see the tanks are moving uh, kind of plays over and over kind of loops the video so you can see that uh, He has other uh, videos as well showing these move well, it's actually the same one as well I apologize and uh, but we go down further this photo image that he posted over on his website alreadyhappen.com <clears throat> showing these seven tanks coming in. Well, I did a little bit of fact checking just to see if there was anything else out there about this. And of course, there was a Russian article from Regium.ru says tanks arrive in Maripol controlled by Ukraine. DPR reconnaissance is reporting. Uh, that's the Donetsk People's Republic, eastern part of Ukraine in the Donetsk area. And uh, to kind of give you a little bird's eye view of this whole region, Let's move into this, where this is all taking place at. Maripol is the coastal town. We have the Sea of Azov right here. And of course, that's that disputed area right now where the standoff between Russian and uh, Ukrainian vessels there. Russia took the tugboat to Ukrainian naval vessels uh, into port, held their sailors uh, captive. There's been a big issue right there. Now they have moved in. The Ukrainian side has moved in tanks, seven unmarked tanks into Maripol. It is believed, according to, to sources here uh, on this Russian website, that this is going to be used to pro, uh, for a provocation. Uh, whether they're going to try to make it look like Russia or they're going to try to make it look like the Donetsk People's Republic has launched a strike against the Ukrainian government to justify an attack or even a war with Russia. It's not looking good, friends. It says here, December the 4th, Donetsk uh, Rignum, a train with seven tanks arrived at the Maripol uh, rail station. A spokesperson for the DPR People's Police, uh, Daniel uh, Bezunsov, say, <clears throat> uh, said on November the 4th during a briefing our observers in Maripol recorded the arrival at the railway station of seven T-64 tanks. Currently, the unloading of this technique is carried out by persons in paramilitary uniform with no insignia, the military said. Viznov noted that the armored vehicles do not have any identification marks and quite possibly will be used for provocations under the identification marks of the DPR. That's the Donetsk People Republic. So in other words, they're planning on putting, they, or at least they believe they're going to put some type of insignia on there and then use it to launch a provocation of, against the civilians to justify an all-out attack on the eastern part of Ukraine there, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Uh, the development of several options for offensive of the armed forces of Ukraine as well as about uh, the arrival in Maripol of many media representatives, which is typically for preparation of provocations. Uh, not only have they announced that, but then I also found Reuters coming out with an article today. Oddly enough, watch this one here. Russia threat highest since 2014 Ukrainian military chief. That's what he's saying. Russia has been ramping up its forces near the border with Ukraine since August and now poses the greatest military threat since 2014. The, the, year, uh, the year of Moscow annexed Crimea, the commander of Ukraine's armed forces told Reuters in an interview on Tuesday. And of course, if you look at his map, he is really showing down here in the Sea of Azov. 
He's showing right up here by Maripool. Uh, and of course, that's why I'm wondering if they're not going to say that Russia has invaded Ukraine and therefore they can get the United States drawn into this conflict. Now, and that's got to be a provocation for Lorenzo to share with me that they're telling him to remove his post. They're angry that he's posted these and posted it on his website. That's because they don't want it to leak out what they're going to do. They're going to start a war and they don't want you to know that it's been provoked and that Russia didn't provoke it. What a mess. What a mess. Mm. See what happens when we've gone to Kansas there. And, and by the way, bless them. You know, Yah bless the people of Kansas. There's just a wonderful group there. Uh, pray for those people there as well. Uh, people come from all over uh, different parts of the United States uh, for that meeting. And also, too, oh gosh, I got to share with you. Uh, we have, let me just pull the website up, the Portland Conference. Portland, Oregon, January the 19th, 2019. Next year, first part of the year. We have that conference. It is, the site is ready to go. Let me just find where, I know uh, Bonnie had sent that to me. Bonnie Harvey, uh, she is hosting the event there. L.A. Marzulli will be speaking at this conference. And I know she sent, maybe she sent it to me on my phone on text. Let me just find that real quick. want to get that up here for you guys so that you can see this as well. Uh, it is a conference you don't want to miss. And it's a simple, here we go, Soldiers. SoldiersOfTheLion.com. So S O L D I E R S O F for of T H E for the Lion.com. And I know the website is still under construction to some degree. Pre preparations for the Soldiers of the Lion Conference um, can can be Oregon January 18th and 20th. That's like a resort out in the countryside. And I think that is the a picture of just going up to this resort that they're having the conference there. Uh, it actually starts that Friday evening on the 18th. L.A. Marzulli will be speaking on that Friday evening. Then my wife and myself and L.A. both will be speaking on uh, Saturday on Yom Shabbat as well as on Sunday. Uh, I'll be speaking as well. And then I will be sharing some inside information about Nibiru on that Sunday. Information that has never been released to the public. Uh, so I can't wait to share that with you. Uh, also we have, it's 44 days away. The tickets will vary. I don't know if that part's up yet. It's under register. Mainly because there is, a, there is uh, yeah they are, they are actually getting them up now. So you have weekend passes from anywhere from $50 to $110. Uh, you have, uh, there's meals that'll be included. There's lodging included. Little bitty cabins there on the facility. I've also been told there are motels in the area nearby. So uh, there's a riverfront lodge, uh, bunk houses, you name it. It's a good way to get a little vacation, get away from everything as well. But I do expect it'll be a little bit chilly in uh, January. Uh, but of course, that part of Portland, it's not, uh, I don't think it's so much snowy as it's just a little bit cool uh, this time of year, especially in January, it'd be the coldest time. But, uh, but anyway, it is definitely going to be uh, some interesting things we'll be discussing there, as well as some of those secret things that I have not shared openly as of yet. I'll be sharing those too at the conference there in uh, Oregon. And so definitely you want to make, uh, make preparations to be there. And, uh, and we do owe a lot of gratitude for Bonnie for hosting this. Uh, the expense of this is enormous. Uh, even though there are tickets sold, I can tell you now tickets will never cover the cost of what it takes to put this conference on. Uh, so that is just really the kindness of our, our sister to do this. And so we certainly uh, owe a debt of gratitude and uh, just pray for her, pray for her and her family for the kindness that she's showing for that. Uh, and hopefully, maybe even an offering, somehow we can help um, contribute to that. Uh, anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Some interesting things going on, guys. Listen, we're about to go live here in just, about, I think, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll be going live with you guys on a different subject. You ain't going to want to miss that. That's a good southern way to put it. You ain't going to want to miss it. Yeah, the dog's crying in the background. I don't know how she got locked in the studio. Anyway, I'm Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live, Arab Talk.